Hi everyone, this is Lino Pastrana, your New York City Astrologer. And today we have a fascinating sub subject to cover. It is understanding sex through astrology. It is fascinating. Why? Because we can understand our partners, ourselves, if we look into the natal chart. If you see the planets, the planets that, that create our sexual experience. That, that is Mars, of course. Mars is always the planet that we look into when we want to find out about our sexual drive, um, activity, um, testosterone, force, and, and needs, of course. But there are other planets that play an important role in our minds, subconsciousness, that represent certain parts of ourselves. Okay? And some of them are Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, Mercury, the Moon, Venus. Okay? So we have to really look into all this. We are, we all are the sum of different aspects in planetary positions, houses, and signs. We cannot cover every little subject on this video because it's a wide, enormous subject. But I'm going to try to convey it as clear as I can so you guys can understand and look into your own chart where to look for the planets and where to look for the eighth house. The natal chart is divided in 12 houses. Each house plays an important role in our life. There are different stages, health, profession, communication, money, and many other things. But today we are going to talk about the eighth house. The eighth house is primordial to understand our sexual, sexual life. Mars. Mars is the energy, the force, the testosterone, the libido, the way how we get things done. So Mars is a very important planet to consider when we understand sex through astrology because Mars is the action itself. However, the action itself doesn't go by itself. We think and we create other things in our consciousness right before. Now, we talk about Venus. Venus. Venus is the sensuality, the taste, the smell, the things that we get attracted to. Even if it's for one night stand or for the rest of your life, we like to taste well. We like to feel well. We like to hear things. We like to smell delicious. So Venus plays a very important role in our sexuality. Now, Mercury. Mercury is as important as Mars and Venus. Why? Because Mercury is the way how you communicate. You communicate even if it's for one night stand or for the rest of your life, regardless, you communicate. You tell the person what you like. You express yourself and goes vice versa. So it's very important to consider Venus, Mercury, and here we go, the moon. The moon. The moon is, represents our needs. The things that we need to feel comfortable with. So the moon is important because we always want to fulfill our needs, one way or the other. Okay? Now we have Pluto. Pluto is the raw energy itself. The energy deep inside us that moves us forward. So with, without Pluto, we will not be able to do many things. Impossible. Because that's the strength, the inner force. Okay? So... Hopefully you guys following the energy that we always use in order to create our sexual experience. Now, Saturn. Saturn is very important. Why? Because Saturn represent, represents the walls. The walls that we create. Our beliefs and the system that we grew up in. Sometimes it limits our sexual life, our sexual performance. And also Saturn teaches lessons. So it is very important, Saturn, in our sex life. Uranus. Uranus is, is important. Why? Because Uranus represents the magnetism, 
the magnetism that we feel towards someone. Many times we are attracted to somebody and it's not really the person that we always thought we would be attracted to. But that person exudes magnetism and we react to that. It's something we just feel. Okay? Now, the moon, Saturn, Pluto, Mercury, Uranus, Mars, Venus, all together combined, they create our experience at every moment of our lives. It is very important to know where are these planets placed in our natal chart. Again, our natal chart is divided in 12 houses. And each house represents a very important part of our lives. Tonight, we want to talk about the 8th house. Because the 8th house is the house that we look into when we want to find out about our sex life, drives, behaviors, and all that. There are also things called aspects between planets. We cannot get into every detail. So please understand, if you comment on my video and give me nice suggestions, I will be happy to follow up with another video explaining maybe the aspects. Because they are as important. If your partner has his Mars is opposite your, your Venus, that's a very interesting energy right there. Very, very interesting synastry. Okay, so please keep that in mind and I will try to develop this concept in my follow-up video. So now we want to talk about the 8th house. The 8th house is a very important house as I mentioned earlier because that's the way how we find out about our sexuality, how is it playing in our chart. This is a chart. It's divided in 12 houses. Each house represents different parts of our lives. Today we're talking about the 8th house. This is the 8th house. And whatever you have at the cusp of the 8th house, whatever sign you have in there, we, all of us, we have a natal chart. And it changes, depends on the time and the place that we were born. Okay? So, if you have, for instance, areas at the cusp of the 8th house, that implies that you are very sexual, that you are first, that will be very difficult to find a match that can keep going with you at your level. In other words, you probably are very active. You demand a lot of action, a lot of um, experience, sexual experience. And to find a partner that could match your, your desires, you will have to really look for it. You know, and, and areas love to go for it. They love to pursue. They don't like to be pursued. They like to be on top. They like to be to go for it. The best matches for Aries, Leo, Libra, because Libra is the axis. That's another subject we want to cover in a different video. The axis of Aries is Libra. So Libra would be a match for, for, for the hot, passionate Aries. Leo is another one. Scorpio could work very well as well with Aries. Re remember that Aries. If Taurus is at the cusp of the 8th house, then the slow moving energy of Taurus makes it more passionate. Taurus is ruled by Venus and is very sensual. With Mars in it, it becomes sensual and sexual. So it's a very powerful, powerful strong energy. And the lover, the Taurus lover, will be not only very loving, but very hot as well, very sexual. Okay? So if you have a, a partner that happens to be a Taurus, please have patience with them, because they move slow. They like to take their time. And for a Taurus, on the 8th house, on the cusp of the 8th house, that means that if the Taurus didn't break a sweat, he didn't have sex, or she didn't have sex. So, be patient with the Taurus and go along with them, because they can be great lovers. Gemini at the cusp of the 8th house. They always learning curious Gemini. 
Gemini is an energy that loves to learn things. They're always up to learning and moving. There is a mutable sign. It's ruled by Mercury. At the cusp of the 8th house, the Gemini will be very into learning new things, experience new things with his or her partner. Gemini rules the hands, so he, he, prob, he or she probably will be very talented in using their hands. So, go figure. Interesting, Gemini's ruled by Mercury on the 8th house. It will make the Gemini extra passionate, curious, interesting in exploring different things. Cancer on the cusp of the 8th house. Cancer, Cancer is an energy that loves to call home every experience. They look forward stability, passion, care. The Cancer is very intuitive as well. On the 8th house, which is naturally the house of Scorpio, which is a water sign, makes the Cancer much more deep and in the pursuit to find home with his or her partners might make the Cancer very active, ultra active. Remember, for the Cancer it's very important to have to call home, to be secure, to be passionate, to be emotional. Everything is ruled by their emotions. They go with, it, with their emotions, whether it's for the rest of their lives or for one night. Now, we keep going through the signs and we get to Pluto, which is rule, rules Scorpio. Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. Pluto is the deep subconscious energy, the raw force. This will make the already high, sensual Scorpio much more comfortable with themselves. If you have a lover, happen to be a Scorpio, or any lover that has Scorpio on the 8th house, on the cusp, that means that it's very comfortable with their sexuality, perhaps. And they love surprises. They love to explore things. The only thing with the Scorpions is when they don't use their sexual, their, their powerful sexual energy, when they, they don't use this force properly to, en to enjoy themselves and to enjoy with somebody else, it could become a little possessive and controlling and obsessive. So pay attention to that and try to keep a balance. Scorpio is a very powerful sexual energy by itself. We keep going, we reach Sagittarius. Sagittarius are the cusp of the 8th house. If you have a lover, they happen to have Sagittarius on the cusp of the 8th house, or you yourself, then that means that you like to explore things. Sagittarius is the arrow, is ruled by Jupiter. And we know in the mythology, Jupiter was the god or the energy that used to go around, having babies everywhere and exploring things. So being on the 8th house will give them an extra tone of sexuality. They're already very on the, on the go. They might be very quick, they might be exploring sex and more as a sport than a passionate thing. And they also it's very important if you happen to have a lover that is um, Sagittarius, you must respect their opinions. They get turned on by that. Okay, so keep that in mind. If we have Capricorn at the cusp of the 8th house, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. Saturn is the energy that likes to give us lessons. We learn with Saturn. Saturn is the great teacher. It's Kronos, the god of the time as well. So, Capricorns love to be in control. They are achievers. They always like to give that idea they are, they are always in control, achieving things, and they are. But on the 8th house, they will make them much more actively sexual, at least thinking or trying to become. Saturn or Capricorns, the, the energy of Saturn and Capricorn makes them not very emotional. They are not very emotional sign overall, you know. But 
in the eighth house, they will make them a little deeper in their thoughts and their actions. And they will make them much more passionate lovers. If you have a, a Capricorn lover and his, his sign, his cast is on the eighth house, then there are things that they like to do. They can be very versatile. Their Capricorn rules the knees, so you can explore things with them. Okay? Now, if we have Uranus or Aquarius on the cusp of the eighth house, which Uranus is ruled by Aquarius, by I'm sorry, Aquarius ruled by Uranus. Um, it is very interesting because Aquarius are a freedom-loving people. They're unique. They are independent. So you can translate that into their sexual life, which is the eighth house. They like to be open. They could be committed, but they need to have their independence, whether it's physical or mental. But they need to feel free, independent, unique. And more importantly, they could be great lovers. Why? Because they are very unusual. It is an energy, they like new things. So they may like to do it everywhere, in the most unusual places. So go with them. Don't be narrow-minded if you have a, an Aquarius lover, because for sure they are going to do things out of, the, out of the box. So don't be narrow-minded. Go with them. Go with the flow. So you can really have a great time with Aquarius. If you have a Pisces at the cusp of the 8th house, Pisces are very nurturing energy, very intuitive. They can read your mind. So that can help in your sexual life because they can understand your fantasies. And Pisces, they love to feel victimized many times. They sacrifice themselves. So it can be fun. It can be, they rule the feet. So imagine that and try to be creative with them. They, are, they give everything. They are very, very expressive. Okay, um, now if we have, oh, I think I, I didn't mention Libra. I'm sorry, Libras, please forgive me. Libras, they are ruled by Venus, the sensuality itself. Oh my God, Libras. If you have a lover who happened to be a Libra, they love the sense. They love to be charmed. They love the beautiful things. Make sure you have a nice candle, you smell well. Okay, Libras also they will go an extra mile to make sure both of you reach the climax. They are very fair energy. Though for sure, they are going to try to be equal. They give a lot, but they want a lot in return. Remember that, Libras. And Virgos. I didn't mention Virgos, my God. Virgos at the cusp of the house. Oh, loving Virgos. Well, Virgos are details, details, and details. They go for details. They are very picky. Don't be surprised if they are cleaning before, cleaning during, and cleaning after every sexual experience. And make sure you're clean. Make sure you take a shower. Make sure you smell good. Or maybe you don't smell like anything, but you're clean because they love clean things. Virgos, please stop controlling so much. Stop analyzing things. You can ruin it. Go with the flow. Go with the flow. If you're lower... Happy to have Virgo at the cusp of the 8th house. Understand them that nothing goes by chance. They have to know everything. Even the most important moment of their sexual experience is sort of planned because they analyze things so much. they trying to control. Okay, So be patient with the Virgos. They are very loving people and they are great for details. And of course they are very clean. But they must... Relax, okay? And last but not least, the loving Leos. The king. Leos are royalty. They are born performance. If you happen to have a lover that has Leo at the cusp of the eighth house, well, the Leo, they, they want to be applauded every time they perform. They like to be appreciated. They may want to hear how great they are. You can have the Leo forever, as long as you praise them, as long as you tell them one way or the other that they are good, they are great, they are loving. And it's a very passionate energy because the Leos are the energy they protect their own. They are loyal. They are very loyal. 
and they're very warm, very hot. So if you have them in this house, it will make the Leo extra warm, extra sexual. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the energy of each planet. As I mentioned earlier, each planet represents certain part of our consciousness. It doesn't mean that they rule any place in our lives. This energy influences us. Yes, of course, like when there is a full moon or a new moon, the tides with a new moon or, or the full moon, yes, things like that. But it doesn't mean that make us do anything. We are the one who choose how to live our lives. There is no way we are pushed to do anything by any energy. I hope you understand that concept. It's very important. So when we say Mercury rules your communications, or Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo, yes, we associate them. Okay? We associate them, and that's how we see them. We use mythology because Mercury was the god, the messenger of the gods, and Venus is Aphrodite, the goddess of love, and so on and so forth. And we use parallels to our consciousness. But that nothing influence or make us do anything. Now, Mars. Mars is the ruler of, of Aries and also the co-ruler of Pluto. Mars is the raw passion, the energy, the force, the drive, the energy that keeps us going, that wake us every morning, get us out of bed, you know, and follow things and do things. Little Mars could make you subdued, easy to be abused, or controlled, manipulated. Strong Mars or too much Mars can make you overly aggressive, overly competitive. So it's important to keep the energy balanced. And as I said earlier, Mars rules the sex action itself, the experience. So Mars can help us to, ex to enjoy our sexual life in a great way. But there are other planets as well, as I mentioned earlier. Mars is a very important energy for all of us, because it's the hero in us. Now, Mercury. Mercury was the messenger of the gods. The only one was, that was capable to go to the underworld and come out alive. Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo. When it's in Gemini, it rules our, our communications, the way how we communicate, the way how we write, express ourselves, small trips, our curiosity, rules the hands. Mercury, in this case, is associated with a lot of exploring, sexual exploring. It could explore with different sexes, it could explore different things. It's the explorer, it's the energy that create things for us to go ahead, to learn. It's always learning the curiosity itself. Okay? Now, Venus. Venus, the energy of Venus, is very important and rules Taurus and follows after Aries, by the way. It's Aries, Taurus, and Gemini. Okay? Taurus is very interesting energy. Why? Because it's our self-worth, represents our self-worth, is ruled by Venus, the Aphrodite. It's the area where also we see um, our money, the money that we make. In this case, we're talking about sex, so we want to focus on that, which is the sensual part of Venus. That's the energy. Okay, it's the passion, it's the love, it's the sensuality. So Venus is very important for all of us to feel, you know, to feel attractive and also rules the senses. But that's more about Libra. In Taurus, it's more like money, sensuality, our self-worth. Venus Aphrodite. Now, we mentioned already Gemini, so we are going to go to Cancer. Cancer. Cancer is a very intuitive energy a sign. Cancer is the moon rules cancer. So the moon moves two and a half days on each sign. So just imagine that it's moving 
rapidly. Therefore, we can feel a little moody once in a while, and cancer can be a little bit of that, or can be prone to that, since the, move, the moon moves so fast and rules our emotions. That's what makes cancer a little bit here and there, overly emotional or a little bit emotional, and it's much more changeable than other signs. The moon represents our needs, emotional needs, what we need to feel comfortable with. Okay, so that's the moon. And the moon is very important because it's our memories as well. It's our memories, our feelings. Okay, now we're going to move to Leo, the Leo king, the Leo royalty. Leo is ruled by the sun, the biggest of all, the life force itself. That's why Leo owns it. Leo is just the Leo. Doesn't need to be anything else but Leo. A performing, a performance, a natural born son. It's very loyal. It's very passionate. It's very egocentric as well. It's very sensual. It's very sexual. But the Leo needs sometimes a little sparkle to keep moving. Otherwise, you know, picture the Leo in the, in the, in the rainforest. He's just like to lay down and lick himself. But the Leo has a present, has power. Is ruled by the sun again, which the sun is the, the major force. Our vitality, all of us, our essence. The energy that we came here to develop. So whatever your sun is, by the way, whether you're Taurus or Virgo or Gemini, that's the energy that you will come here to develop, to work on. Together with the axis, you have to go that way. But that's a subject for my next video. So just stay with me, please. Now we're going to talk about Virgo. Virgo is also ruled by, Gem by, I'm sorry, by Mercury as Gemini. But the energy is a little bit different. Virgos overanalyze things, which is mental. You remember, Geminis, they rule our way how we learn, communications, and the curiosity. Well, in Virgo, we, all, we have all that, but we have a little bit different tone, which is we analyze, we're picky, we see things that other people miss, we look into details. Sometimes we are so focused on details that we lose the big picture. Virgos are great for many things. It's an earth sign. Virgos, when they are not well aspected or when they are using the energy on one side more than the other and there's a little bit of an imbalance, can be overly critical. Nothing is good enough. So Virgos have to balance his, their energy and they can be great workers, great friends. Their points of view are very important and very helpful. Okay? So now, Libras. Libras are also ruled by, by Venus, but just a li little different tone. Venus and Libra implies charming behavior, diplomacy, equality. They are very given, as I explained earlier in my video, but they like to take as well. They like to take, they like to give. It has to be balanced. Otherwise, they don't function well. The Libras are great, ruled by Venus, Aphrodite, they give them a ton of beauty, charm, diplomacy. They are great, but they have to be balanced as well. They can be passive-aggressive otherwise. So it's important to understand yourself. If you, know, if you know yourself, you know the entire universe. It start with us. Now, we want to move to Scorpio. Scorpio is a great healing energy, magnetic, powerful. Scorpio can give us the cure or the poison. Scorpio in the lower form is the snake that moves in, in the ground, on the ground. But in the higher form, they are the eagle. They reach the higher form. They are very spiritual energy. Scorpios, I believe they are misunderstood. People think, Scorpio, oh, I've got to be careful. No, Scorpios are great, great energy to have around. They're just a little mysterious. A little, they seem a little secretive. Not necessarily they are, not at all. But they seem that way. But they are, again, they're very magnetic and very healing. If their energy is used properly, 
you want to have them around. And they are ruled by Pluto. Pluto is the raw energy, the strength, the things that go inside ourselves, the things that we don't see on a daily basis, but they are alive. So keep that in mind, please. Scorpios are very powerful energy, many times, many times misunderstood, but they are loving people and very healing. It's great to have a Scorpio around. Sagittarius. Sagittarius is an energy that sees the bigger picture. They're very lucky. They're ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is the, the energy that multiplies things. The multiplier. The energy is the king of the gods. I mean, Jupiter was the king of the gods. Nothing bigger than them. We all want Jupiter to come around, to come back. It takes 12 years to come back to, your, to, to the place where you have on your natal chart. 12 years. But when it comes back, we're all happy because we think things are going to be great. And usually they are. But there are many other things in between that we have to look into. Aspects and other things. We will get into that on my next video. But Jupiter is a great energy, rules Sagittarius, normally it's on the ninth house, and they multiply things. Okay, it's the king of the gods, Jupiter rules Sagittarius again, and Sagittarius is one of the luckiest sign of all. Now we move to Capricorn. Capricorns are very go-getters. They are earth. They are achievers. They, li they like to, to get things done. They are cardinal. They keep going. Saturn is the ruler, and Saturn is the energy that put us limits, teach us things, show us how to get things done in a way of being responsible. The structures. Okay, so remember, Saturn is very important for all of us in our sub subconscious, the energy that represents some part of ourselves, because that's the energy that we must break through in order to be free with Uranus and Aquarius, but we get there in a minute. Saturn, again, teaches lessons, and it's very important. Rules Capricorn, so please keep that in mind. Now, Aquarius, as I was mentioning a second ago, Aquarius is a freedom, it's a equality for all of us. This is the era of Aquarius, we just started. Ruled by Uranus, Uranus is the energy of freedom, independency, new things, they revel in us, very unusual things, they like things different, different and unique. It's a great, great energy. I, I really like Aquarius because they are very innovative. They come with new things. They are always renewing themselves. They are up there. Sometimes it's hard to understand Aquarius, but it's because their minds are always projecting. And the energy is very attractive, can be very magnetic. So when you feel a a magnetic energy coming from someone, you're attracted to that person. Many times that, pe that person is reflecting the Uranian energy, so you're feeling the magnetism. Okay? Now we go move to Pisces. Pisces is Neptune that rules Pisces. And Neptune is the god of the oceans, Poseidon. This god and this energy is water, is the energy of intuitiveness. Self-sacrificing, understanding. It's very, very important to understand that Pisces are so important into our fantasies and to create ideas in our heads and to project and to be creative. And so when some people have a strong Neptune, for instance, in the chart, it could imply two things. One, that, one, that they are very, very creative people. They feel the pain of other people, naturally. Or they can have problems with alcohol and drugs. Depends how you're using the energy, one more time. It all depends how you live in your life. Every, every energy has a duality. And we look at it that way, to explore and understand every person's chart. Every energy, every planetary aspects and all that, there's always a duality of things. I mentioned aspects. I would like to develop that in the following video. If you suggest that, I would more than happy to do it. Right now, I want to talk about a char. 
I have a chart here of a person who used his energy, his sexual energy, in not the best way possible. To be, to I'm trying to say it in, in the nicest way. You're gonna see. This person has Mars in the first house and Scorpio. Scorpio, we mentioned, can be a very magnetic healing energy, misunderstood many times. However, poorly managed, that energy can be vindictive and search for power. Vengeful, overly sexual, and on top of that, can use the sexual energy to manipulate and to control others. Remember that. So this person has Mars conjuncting his ascendant right here. This Mars is squaring Pluto, and Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio. Pluto is the highest planet. There is a square. This red line means, means square. In astrology, we have aspects. Some of them are square. Sometimes you have a trine. Sometimes you have an opposition or conjunction. Each of them represents different energy or situation. I personally like the aspects that can be challenging, which are uh, squares, oppositions, conjunctions, because they wake you up versus the soft, nice energy, which are trying sex styles, because they are so good that sometimes you don't even feel them. It's just very easy. But when you are shake, squares, oppositions, or conjunctions, is when we wake up. The, the energy makes us wake up and do things and be active and change things around. Our lives change. Okay, I will try to explain more about aspects and planetary places, placements in a different video. But here, Mars square Pluto, it means... It means Pluto being the ruler of his ascendant. It means he was striving for power. He were, he really wanted power. So right there we see a situation of very strong sexual activity and power. Sometimes when you mix those two, and now in not the most evolved way, it can be very problematic for yourself. We are the one who create our reality, and we do not want to use our sexual power or any power in a negative way because it will be counterproductive and it's going to hurt us in the short or long run. Okay, so that's the one one of the aspects that are very interesting to see. And now, if we keep looking, we see Uranus on the eighth house. Uranus is opposite the Moon. Second house, eighth house. Remember, I was talking about the cusp of the eighth house. He has in in the eighth house Uranus, and Gemini is at the cusp. So just by looking at these two planets, Uranus and the Moon. Remember, the Moon was our needs, our emotional needs, and also represents our mother and memories. But in this video, we want to focus on the sexual part. Opposite the moon, I'm sorry, opposite Uranus, the moon opposite Uranus on the 8th house, implies that you like to do, to have sex in a very unusual way. But with this aspect here to the moon, is related to woman. So there's something to do with woman in a very different way. There's power, search for power to use because it's connected to use in a very poor way and sexual activity and the most strange, maybe devious manner. So we have this and this tell us that there is something about the person that doesn't seem to be flowing. But we don't know until we talk to the person. Because we can have this these aspects and these planetary positions but we could be living a very healthy and, and, and warm and, and, and nice life. Not necessarily means that you are living your life in the most negative way. All depends on us, okay? But in this case, he was using his sexual energy in the, in the lowest form. 
like Pluto or Scorpio, the lowest form and the highest form. The lowest form is crawling on the ground. The, high, the highest form is flying like an eagle. Okay, so we see there's an issue with mom from the sex house to mom, all women in his life, and sex and power involved. That's a very interesting thing to understand because we want to always keep it balanced our lives. And when you read the natal chart, when an astrologer look at your chart, we can see things. We can see things, patterns and potentialities. And we could advise and guide people because this is a, one of the greatest tools there is. Okay? I hope, I don't want to get into all the details of the chart because there's a lot to look into it. I only want to, to show you the cusp of the 8th house, which is Gemini. And Gemini is the curiosity. They're open to do things. It's the duality as well. There are two on the 8th house. Uranus in there, which is a very unusual way of doing or having sex. Opposite the moon, female, mother. The mother had to do something to, to his subconscious. The experience with his mother marked his sexual life. Mars square Pluto in search for power, using the raw energy of Pluto with sexual and force to control women. Okay, so please understand these positions. Remember what I mentioned, the 8th house, the cusp of the 8th house. Here's Gemini. Gemini is curiosity, is learning, but in this case, he used the energy of Gemini to have a duality. He probably had a nice home, Mary and, by, Mary and all that, and also something else on the side, something dark, something unusual. This person is Harvey Weinstein. So we, we all know what happened to him, or what did he do to other people, how he used his sexual energy, his power, his money, and the lowest form of Scorpio. He's a Scorpio ascendant. He's, he's actually a Aries, but Scorpio ascendant, and the Scorpio, as I told you earlier, can have the cure or the poison, can give us healing energy or can intoxicate us. In this case, he used the lower form. We all know what happened. So, please, I hope you understand my, my, my chart, the chart that I, I cast for Harvey Weinstein. We all know what happened. And I also want to remind you that these planetary positions only imply certain things. We are the ones who drive ourselves to right or left, forward or backwards. If you have this kind of chart, doesn't mean that you are like him. Not at all. We have a choice. We can make our life better. Or we can help other people. We can direct our energy the best way possible. Thank you so much for listening. I am Lino Pastrana, the New York City astrologer. I am at linoastrology.com. That's my website. You can communicate with me anytime you want. If you like this video, please make a comment and let me know. Give me suggestions. Uh, understand that we are learning together. I am learning from you and you are learning from me, I hope. So we can grow together and evolve together. You, your opinion, your suggestions will help me to make the following video. And I can talk about that, about the aspects and other meanings within the, and synastry, of course, and the meaning of the chart in, a, in another more um, explanatory way, covering different points, but one thing at a time. Thank you so much for listening. Namaste.